your timing is perfect because look look who's making her way down oh oh hey that was pretty graceful well done I've seen leopard cubs this size go tumbling out of trees but the female cub managed to make that descent look almost like she's mastered the art of tree climbing she nearly dropped the carcass out of the tree just by the way oh <laughs> Oh, that's so sweet. Little bit of affection there between mom and daughter. Quickly clean, her, clean away all of that daker that I'm sure she's got everywhere. Krula making sure that her cubs stay clean. <laughs> Even when they resist. <laughs> she was lying on the carcass earlier, so... Karula doing a fantastic job of sorting her out. Cleaning paws away. No, Mom. Mom, I don't want a bath. I'm done now. <laughs> I want to fight. I want to play fight. Ah. <laughs> oh. I'm so glad that we've got to see this. I'll just bear with me one second. Um, Taxon is wanting to come and join us. Oh, got you, Mum. <laughs> Kathy in Tennessee. We're watching this little female batter Mum about and resist her attempts at a bath and attempt to make them into playtime. You're wondering who becomes or which becomes independent first, a female or a male. Interestingly enough, it's the female cubs that tend to become independent faster. They just generally show more independence than the male, even if they're a little bit shyer at first. They're usually the ones that start play hunting first. She was trying to move the carcass around earlier, and at around a year and a half, they'll start to move off on their own. Male cubs on the other hand, actually tend to be mommy's boys and they stick around for a little bit longer every now and again moving off on their own and then coming back and they can stay with their mom right up until two years old and even revisit her a couple of times in their initial first steps towards independence. Oh, somebody's getting a really thorough bath from mom. George could not be. Oh no, I'm doing it again. I'm, I'm in that habit now. James has done a, a terrible thing. <laughs> Michelle, you want to know who will give the cubs their official names. Well, at this point, I mean, I'm going to have a habit that is going to be incredibly difficult to break. But the official naming will be done at a rangers meeting where every interested party. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> Sorry, Michelle. Yer, cub pile. George wants to sleep. Charlotte wants to play. Oh, there's Mom's tail. And now Mom is thinking about having a little bit of a late afternoon snack. She's actually not full bellied at all. Most of that has gone towards the cubs. Oh. Mom's actually getting up to relieve herself. Alright, Michelle, sorry to get back to your question about naming of the cubs. Each of the interested parties, in other words, the lodges that get to see Karula and the cubs, will put forward name suggestions onto a, um, or, uh, during a meeting, and they will then, as a sort of a democratic unit, the various guides of the various lodges will vote upon the different options. So it's, a, it's quite a democratic process. It used to be, there's a couple of different traditions, it used to be the longest serving guide, so the guide, whoever's been around for the longest would get to name them, or else the person who first found them, which in this case of course would have been Brent. But the tradition has changed ever so slightly, and it has now become a more democratic process. Just 
to, I think, make things a little bit more fair for the people who see them every day and refer to them by their names. Now, of course, as you know, leopard cubs only generally, traditionally, get named after their first year, just because the mortality rate is so high. However, during a meeting, we did discuss this, and we think that we're going to push forward naming the cubs a little bit earlier. Where are we off to, everybody? Oh, big cat stretch. There goes George. Probably to shelter in that drainage line away from the wind. Let's go and investigate. She might also be thirsty. Whoopsie. Is there a bit of a jump there, George? Are you going to pounce on your sister? <laughs> but yes, we are going to try and name them a bit sooner because otherwise we're all going to start calling them George and Charlotte. And <laughs> Surprise attack from mum. <laughs> oh, wow. We're extraordinary, extraordinarily privileged to be able to witness this. Hey, Kurula, you don't look like you've eaten much of that daycare at all. Oh, hello. Number two has arrived. Watch out, Kurula, there's a cub there. I believe we have the royal urination occurring. It's similar to coronation, but not quite as dignified. Yes, that's yours, Karula. There you go. Just like domestic cats do. Genteel, ever the lady, now covering up <laughs> the remains of the excretory process whilst being carefully watched by George, who I think is definitely not going to be taking notes because he's a male leopard. He'll do things a little bit differently. Oh no, we were just digging a hole for the second half. There is a sentence here I never thought I would use, but I think that the Queen is feeling a bit constipated. But there we go. We have relief as George watches on. Sorry, George. He looks relatively unconcerned. He's also got relatively brown eyes. It's fascinating. What are you doing, Mum? I want to play. Now I want to play. How many of you at home have got kids that, at that point when they're toddlers, or grandkids, that you haven't really even got an opportunity to go to the bathroom on their own? Oh! <laughs> Ambush. Oh! Uh, Mum proving the superiority of her climbing skills. Leaving the cubs far behind and coming to enjoy a little bit of whatever's left of the Dacre. Whatever scraps they have left her with. Yes, have a jolly good sniff. What's the plan now, George? Mum's up the tree. Sister's gone who knows where. Are you going, who are you going to follow? Probably little, oh, probably the sister. Now Charlotte in PE, not Charlotte the leopard cub, you were wondering, oh, big yawn, showing off those fearsome canines. You were wondering whether it's possible to have leopard cubs sired by two different fathers from the same litter. Now, interestingly enough, we don't know and that's why this Panthera scat analysis is going to be so incredibly fascinating when we do actually find out the results. So what we're doing at the moment is we're collecting leopard scat in order for them to do DNA tests on the paternity of the different leopards. Because as you can imagine, it's pretty easy to figure out who mom is. But dad proves to be a little bit more tricky. And I'll explain a bit more in a moment. Go ahead, Tax. Just need to help Tax come and join us. That's affirmative. You're more than welcome. 